Well, I hope I'm ready to talk about this. And I hope you guys will still be with me on the other side. Greetings, one and all, and welcome to Tom's Hit Parade. Uh, this is going to be a bit of a different video, I'm going to warn you right now, uh, in terms of subject matter. Now, I've, as I've mentioned before, I like to keep things as light as possible on my channel, uh, with very rare exceptions. I don't like to go into rants or be negative or anything like that. Uh, music has always been a very positive and uh, enlightening and uh, mood-enhancing thing for me. So this is going to be a very rare uh, downer of a video, partly because of my mood. Uh, a few days over the last month or so, uh, for like two day stretches, two or three day stretches, I've been kind of in a downer mood, and I don't know why. It's, I mean, you know, when you've got a reason, you know, you can kind of deal with it and accept it, but sometimes, like I said, every, you know, every month or so, this has kind of been unusual since it's been twice this month, but every month or so, I get into a day or two where I just feel down and grumpy and sorry for myself for no good reason. So, but anyway, uh, not to get going into that, but uh, yeah this subject kind of fits that mood, so that's why I've, I've decided to. I've been thinking about doing this for a while, but I figured, you know, since I've I've been in this mood lately, I decided I'd go ahead and uh, take advantage of the mood, I guess you'd say, and address this subject. I've been, as I said, meaning to talk about it for a while. It is about Michael Jackson and the whole Leaving Neverland thing. Uh, part of me didn't want to talk about it, uh, for reasons I'll get into in a minute. But uh, there were a couple things that compelled me. Yeah, my mood for one. And also, uh, Sam Bennett uh, recently had me as a guest on his podcast in which we discussed our top ten favorite Michael Jackson songs. And that actually, we recorded that before the whole Leaving Neverland thing broke. And so he's been delaying uh, posting that podcast for obvious reasons. And he says he's planning on doing that soon. Uh, he just kind of wanted to a lot of this to blow over. So, uh, if and when he posts that podcast, just remember that that is the context in which we recorded it, was we had no idea this Leaving Neverland thing was going was about to drop, or I, I guess we knew, but we didn't know to what degree, obviously. Now, let me start off by saying I have not watched Leaving Neverland uh, for a couple of uh, basic reasons. Uh, first of all, I can't watch it, uh, because we have Dish Network, and Dish Network is currently in an ongoing contract dispute with HBO, uh, so it's not carrying any of HBO's channels, so I can't watch it on on the satellite, on Dish Network. And we also live out in a uh, broadband gray area. We live kind of out in the boonies, and so our broadband is not optimal for Netflix streaming, so we actually don't have a Netflix membership. So, And I, I've, I'm aware that the thing is av available on Netflix. I don't know if it still is or not, but anyway. So yeah, I haven't been able to watch it for those reasons. Uh, but at the same time, there's a big part of me that honestly doesn't want to watch it, uh, to be quite honest with you. And there's a basic reason for that is I grew up in the 80s. I'm an 80s kid. I grew up listening to Michael Jackson's music. Uh, I basically became a fan of popular music right about the time between his Thriller and Bad albums. So it's like right in the middle of the 80s. Uh, I didn't quite become a big, as big a fan of Michael Jackson until a bit later on. I was more of a fan of uh, other other acts like Duran Duran and, and uh, Men at Work and Huey Lewis in the News. Uh, but still, it's like when I was a kid, you basically could not escape his music. It was everywhere. It was on the radio and on uh, MTV. And, and bear in mind, back then, those were the only two places that you could hear music if you, if you didn't own the records. Uh, then, you know, there was no social media or you know internet or anything like that. So it's like on the radio or on MTV or other TV stations that happened to play music videos. It's like, that was the only places where you could hear his music, and even then, it felt like his music was everywhere. So yeah, it was a big part of my childhood growing up. It was honestly, quite literally, part of the soundtrack of my youth. And so, for that reason, I, I don't want my memories of Michael Jackson, the artist anyway, uh, to be tarnished any more than they already are, you know, with the the accusations that I know have been out for for years, you know, the the more vague general accusations, as opposed to the gory details that I hear come up in this documentary. I have nothing but good memories of Michael Jackson's music, and good memories connected to Michael Jackson's music. Uh, I had this best friend growing up when I was a kid, and when I was when we were. 13, 14 years old, I think it was, we had this bad argument, a uh, bad falling out, and I was afraid that our friendship was going to be over forever. 
uh, but I remember hearing a Michael Jackson song. I actually don't remember what song it was, but it made me feel better. And it, you know, eventually our friendship uh, repaired itself, and you know, we went on being friends for many years after that. And so, so yeah, Michael Jackson's music, as much as any other artist like Weird Al or anybody else, has soothed my emotions, helped me through times, tough times when I was a kid. Now you might recall in my Music Snobbery Qualified video that I did last year, I explained how I can almost always separate the art from the artist, and that is true with Michael Jackson. I am capable of taking his music completely on its own merits and uh, you know, separating Michael Jackson the artist from Michael Jackson the person, you know, who he was off stage, you know, away from the microphone, out of the recording studio. But don't construe that for defending or excusing his alleged behavior. I mean, there is no defense, there is no excuse for what he is alleged to have done to those boys. I mean, case closed, you know, point blank. And without getting too far into the psychology of it, uh, I, I'm not a psychologist at all, uh, the closest I could come uh, to possibly explaining, you know, though I use that word very loosely, his behavior, is due to his damaged childhood. I mean, I've, from what I've heard or read about him, he experienced uh, some emotional and physical abuse at the hands of his father, uh, as did, to varying degrees, the rest of his siblings. Uh, his dad basically treated them as a meal ticket, as a, you know, a cash cow. So, in a way, he had no childhood. And, you know, for that, I pity him. So, obviously, this is probably, again, I'm no psychologist, but I would assume that, you know, a psychologist would interpret this as trying to find some way to obtain a childhood that he lost when he was a kid. So, uh, but anyway... Now, some of the uh, backlash and uh, repercussions or consequences, if you will, of Michael Jackson's alleged actions has already been felt uh, in various parts of the world. Several uh, establishments of various types have already removed uh, memorabilia or depictions or monuments of sorts to, uh, to Michael Jackson. And there are several radio stations in parts of the world. I don't know if it's started happening in the States yet, but uh, radio stations in Canada and Australia New Zealand have already pulled Michael Jackson's songs from their playlists. So, and that basically brings the question around naturally, is Michael Jackson too big to be erased? And to be quite blunt, I think yes, I think he is. Uh, first of all, there's, you know, his influence in the music world. I mean, when you think about it, there's probably not an artist active today in whose music you can't at least hear an influence of sorts that came directly from Michael Jackson that can be di directly attributed to Michael Jackson, or an artist who's specifically stated that Michael Jackson is an influence on their music. So yeah, it's it's not overstating it in my opinion that uh, popular music wouldn't be what it is today without Michael Jackson. So you know, there's that. Secondly is the factor that, well, to put it quite bluntly, he's dead now, so he's no longer an active threat to children. So I think that puts a bit of a, a bit more of a concrete line, I guess you'd say, in his actions, and uh, that justifies the third factor I'm about to get into, and that is the fact that, well, to put it equally bluntly, he makes too much money. Uh, I cannot picture in my wildest dreams Sony putting his albums out of print or you know removing them from his roster from their roster or anything, because they're still selling, I'm sure. And, you know, they just, like I said, they just make the labels too much money. So, yeah, honestly, I don't think his music is going to disappear or that his legacy is going to be written out of the history books or anything. Uh, the accusations that Leaving Neverland brings up are definitely going to be written into the history books. Uh, they're not disappearing anytime soon either, so he's going to have a tarnished legacy, but I honestly think that Michael Jackson's legacy is going to continue. And as I said, I'm not going to stop listening to his music. Um, I don't see myself buying any more of his albums that I already have, but yeah, I'm I'm going to keep on listening to him. And from what I've read, I'm kind of in the majority. I think a majority of fans, uh, from what I understand, um, will not stop listening to him. Now, I obviously don't expect everybody to agree. And uh, one thing that I think is going to be kind of interesting with all this, in kind of a clinical or statistical perspective, is I think this is going to prove to be a generational thing uh, of you know who listens to Michael Jackson's music and who doesn't. I think the people, you know, around my generation and a couple of generations ahead 
who grew up to listening to Michael Jackson's music as it was being made uh, are going to be the ones more likely to continue listening to his music, whereas the younger generations, uh, the ones who, I mean, especially the ones who uh, started listening to him after he was deceased, I think are going to uh, see more of a reason to stop listening to him, because uh, to them, I think their music was not quite as integral a part of their growing up. Now, the other reason I decided to finally bring up the whole Michael Jackson thing on my channel is because of Barbara Streisand. Yes, I wasn't, wasn't going to talk about it until the news broke in the British press, what was it, a couple weeks ago, where she made those totally head-scratching comments uh, about Michael Jackson, which she has since backpedaled on and apologized for, uh, to give her some credit. Uh, yeah, I wasn't going to talk about Michael Jackson, but this kind of tipped the scales, partly because if you watched my uh, favorite albums of the year video a few uh, couple months ago, Barbara Streisand's album Walls was my number one pick of the year, and I actually do still stand by that choice. Uh, but I'm going to try and, well, I don't know how much I could defend Barbara Streisand. Depending on how you look at her statements, you know, there may not be much to defend, but I'm going to try and parse them as much as I can. Let's put it that way. Now, uh, for one thing, one possible way to possibly explain her comments was she says she never suffered abuse uh, in her youth or her career, so maybe her inability to relate can explain uh, some of her remarks. I, I guess I can only guess at that. And also, to be honest, I sometimes have trouble verbally articulating exactly what's in my head, uh, especially when it comes to these videos, so maybe she just didn't choose her words carefully enough, and I think actually that's how she worded, worded part of her apology. So, you know, that could very well be her deal. I mean, you know, hey, I, I spent, let me tell you how many hours I spent writing the notes for this video to make sure that I explain myself properly here. So, you know, I can identify with that problem if that's something that she uh, has. I mean, she is an entertainer and a performer, and not, not so much a public speaker, so there could be that, you know, that could be a factor in it. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, devil's advocate, I guess. But uh, yeah, some of the specific comments that she made, um, his sexual needs were his sexual needs. Okay, Babs, you ain't no psychologist, uh, and neither am I, but they were not his sexual needs. They were most likely carnal manifestations of his psychological troubles, but they were not his sexual needs. Sorry, Babs, that's just out the window. Now, one of the things that makes that comment in particular so head-scratching, to me at least, is Barbara Streisand has, over the years, been sympathetic toward and, in some ways, an advocate of people who have suffered adversity of various types. So I cannot believe for a minute that she would in any way think that sexual abuse of a child is okay under any circumstances. So, you know, my first thought was when I read that was, okay, she had to have misspoken. She just didn't choose her words properly or something. And I'm also kind of wondering though, is she beginning to lose her marbles? You know, I mean, I mean, she's in her seventies, so it's possible. I don't think you know, she may not necessarily be showing any clinical signs of it, but, you know, this could be anecdotal evidence that she might be slightly, you know. Anyway, on from that. Uh, and the other bizarre comment in that article that really stuck out for me was, it didn't kill them. You know, Michael Jackson's abuse may have hurt them, but it didn't kill them. And that, I mean, I had to think about that for a while, and as near as I can figure, I mostly attributed that to the, what I call the suck it up generation. You know, hey, it's just a puncture wound in the back of your head from a half inch thorn on a rose bush. Stop crying about it. That, by the way, happened to me when I was a little tiny kid. I can say that story for another time, but anyway. You know, some people of Barbara Streisand's generation and later generations believe that young people are overly sensitive about some things and, you know, they tend to react by being not quite sensitive enough. So so anyway, yeah, that's uh, near as I can figure to what Barbara Streisand actually meant to say in those wacky things that she said in that British interview uh, is those uh, possible postulations that I previously proposed. But uh, yeah, those are my feelings on Michael Jackson and Barbara Streisand. And with Streisand, I will continue listening to her music as, my, as with Michael Jackson. Uh, but uh, unlike Michael Jackson, I may actually end up buying 
uh, more Barbra Streisand albums in the future. I don't know yet. I'll cross that bridge when I come to it, so to speak. And I still maintain that Walls is my number one album of last year. I stand by that. But yeah, I hope you appreciated hearing my thoughts on Michael Jackson and Barbra Streisand. It was something that I kind of wanted to get off my chest, and I'm hoping that maybe these inexplicable moods that I've been in might possibly be explained by the fact that I've had these thoughts on my mind for a while, and now that I've gotten them out in a video, maybe these mood swings, uh, for the most part, are behind me for a while. I can only hope that those were subconsciously bogging me down. Uh, but anyway, as I said, I hope you appreciated hearing my thoughts on Michael Jackson and Barbra Streisand. I hope I was able to articulate them in an effective way, and that I hope you appreciated this rare trip into dark territory on my channel. Uh, unless you actually like this sort of stuff, if you know, if you want to hear my darker music-related thoughts uh, in the future, a little more often in the future, let me know. Uh, or any any unsavory topics that you think you might like to hear my opinions on, if I have any. Let me know in the comments. Uh, and I also hope that, uh, despite what I've said in this video, if you disagree with me, you will continue to watch my channel. Uh, because, uh, yeah, as I said, unless the viewers demand it, this is one of the very few trips down dark territory that I'm going to take. But anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I appreciate feedback, whether about this video or anything on my channel, or about music in general. I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below. I invite you to subscribe to my channel as well, and check out my past videos to see what you might have missed. I'm also on Twitter, and you can find a link to my Twitter feed in the description below, so check it out and follow along. Also, please take the time to visit my friends and fellow YouTubers channels, which are also linked to in the description below. They're all great at what they do, and they're very much worth your attention. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.